Hey guys, right, welcome to part two of the rear subframe uh, overhaul. So in the last video you saw us rip this out of the coupe, which is back up there. So this is untouched now. I haven't done anything besides unbolt the uh, shafts and make sure they're free. Uh, that's much easier to do on the car. Anyway, we're now going to get into stripping this down. So the first stage we actually unbolt in every single component so it's in its unique form. And then we can figure out pulling bushes out of stuff. Uh, as we need. So I've got my glamorous assistant here, Mr. Jason Hanley. He's going to give us a hand to uh, throw tools at me and film it. And then uh, once this is all stripped down, it's going to go with the rest of this, which he is now getting powder coated. And uh, with some of my bushes, or some of my bushes and bearings, we're going to be putting stuff together and offering those online. So some of you have already bought them already, so thank you for that. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in anything, give us a shout, drop a comment below, and uh, I'll be able to drop you a message and uh, we can supply you with a, a setup for your 36, your 46, possibly even your compact or E30. So uh, anything you need, just drop a message below and uh, let me know and I can sort you out if you're in the south of the UK. Right, to start off with, first thing I'm gonna whip off is the anti-roll bar. That's basically in the way of everything. So I've got most of the tools laid out that I'll need. The anti-roll bar starts off with a 13 mil and it's not captive, so there's a nut on the back and then a uh, bolt through the front. So let's get that spinning first. <coughs> so, glamorous assistant to the rescue. Erwin, Erwin bolt extractors. Incredibly well. When, when are they ever that wrong? Um. I'm surprised it's come off a really clean 36 coupe to be honest with you. Yeah, good joke. <laughs> that one looks fine. Oh, that is crusty. The, the bolt on the back is just as bad. I don't even know why I'm putting the grinder away because I know those are going to be rotten as well. <laughs> there we go. Hey. I think we don't, might need to replace those. Pretty crusty. <laughs> you shot me. The good thing is, those clamps are dirt cheap from BMW. You still buy them. I think they're something like eight or nine quid each. So uh, if you've got to cut yours off, don't feel too bad. Right, so that's the main bushes or part of the anti roll bar off. And then you've got these mounts here. So you've got a little aluminium arm that joins the anti roll bar to the spring perch. These, virtually on every single subframe, these are rotten. Um, you can usually get the bolt to spin and then it will do a couple of turns and that will seize on there. I'm not even going to bother with them because I know exactly what's going to happen. So what I'm simply going to do. Hit the aluminium arm. And snap it off like that. You can never reuse these because they're impossible to get off and salvage. They're a nightmare to replace the bushes. The whole arms are about 15 quid each on my website, well, for a pair. It's just not worth trying to piss around with them time-wise and effort. Um, and if, even if you do get them off and try and replace the bushes, nice as that turn the aluminium bends because it's so soft. So just bin it. Same on this one. That's your anti roll bar off, ready for powder coat. First item done. Right, at that stage, I'm then going to attack the arms. So get the trailing arm away from the um, spring perch, lower arm and drive shaft. 
So to get that one off, you've got two uh, ball joints or ball joint top and bottom. Or if it's an M3, ball joint top, rubber bush at the bottom. These are 18 mil from memory. It's worth mentioning, these love to seize, um, especially the lower bolt, the camber bolt, that gets all the road grime. So uh, be prepared to get your cutting disc out on this one as well. But let's try it with the gun, see if we can get it off. So a similar thing, let's get it moving first of all. That's a good start. That was nice and easy. Again, there's nothing left of that bolt. It's very, very thin from rust, so definitely needs replacement. So we won't be reusing that. And we can just punch the bolt through. Bolt's not in too bad shape, so you could probably reuse that, but that bolt's no good. And then onto the bottom bolt, exactly the same scenario, an 18 mil on the bottom. So let's get that spinning first of all. And then once that's spinning, I probably should say at this point, it's worth soaking everything that you're gonna touch, just to give you the best chance possible. So anything you're gonna undo, Uh, diff bolts are normally alright. All of these subframe bolts, including the little ABS sensors. Obviously, to give it the best chance possible, you should be giving it a wire brush, but it should be okay. And then we just got to get the spanner on this bolt. See what happens. So, 18 mil uh, bolt with a sorry, 19 mil nut, 19 mil bolt with a 19 mil, 18 mil nut. I'm surprised that came out of there. Normally they're really badly seized in there. They might turn, you might get the nut off. But. So, just to mention, these from the factory are an eccentric bolt and washer. Uh, where's the nut? It's a normal nut, same as this one. But you've got an 18 mil or 90 mil bolt with an eccentric washer. So this is how you set the camber on a stock E36, E46 platform. You've got this fixed arm, but there's a little bit of camber adjustment from this eccentric washer. If you're swapping to a Powerflex, uh, or max speeding rods, camera arm, something like that fully adjustable. You don't need to reinstall this. You could just put the same bolt that's in the top uh, bush there in the bottom. But if you're retaining the stock camera arm, that's important you keep a hold of this bolt or replace it with light for light because that's how you get your camera adjustment. So don't lose that if you're gonna reuse your bolts because they're quite hard to find. You might still be able to get them from BMW, you probably can. Right, at that point, in theory, this trailing arm should be free. So we can just tap that out the way. I imagine the drive shaft is probably holding that in, so if we just tap that back through. Beautiful. Mm, that was the um, aftermath of you uh, lubing the shaft on it earlier. Yeah, on the input, the shaft and the hub. I'm pretty certain that's not original grease, is it? No, it's copper not. grease. So, I oh, think someone's copper greased oh, Amazing. Someone's been in here before and done a wheel bearing. So, thankfully, they've greased the shaft. Well, just the fact it's been apart at some point in its life has probably meant that it's actually been apart or been easier to get apart, and I can actually salvage the drive shaft. It's really common for these to uh, seize in the hub. If that happens, it's virtually impossible to get it out. Your best bet is to try and get it out whilst it's still on the car. The ball peen hammer in the end of the shaft, hit it with another hammer, and they do move probably 75% of the time, but occasionally they can be really stuck. Um, you can soak them in diesel, you can try all sorts of methods, 
if they're really seized in there, they really are seized, and you've only got so long with hitting them before you'll start to mushroom the end of the threads. Basically, if you, our method to get them out, you usually hit them like this, but you've only got probably five or 10 hits before you then start to deform this thread, which at that point, you then can't get a nut on it. So realistically, if it doesn't come out with five or six hits at that point, you've got to accept that it's probably stuck in there and you need to get some sort of uh, impact uh, chisel or something like that to shock it free because uh, the hitting it will just deform it. I've done it plenty of times. You could, if you've got means to, you could brace it up on the table and get like a jackhammer, like a concrete breaker and sit there and that'll probably do it. But most people haven't got one of those at home. Anyway, we'll come back to that arm in a minute. If you have a quick look at this uh, nut, there is not much left of that head at all. So some of these can really fight you. This one's probably gonna be a tricky one, but let's get a socket on there and hope for the best. Pleasant surprise because they're usually seized in there. But anyway, that's uh, that one out. Obviously, having this off the car makes it a lot easier because you can get to everything. Um, and an impact gun is a saving grace. Trying to do this with hand tools, you'll just slip. So, this is really a job for an impact gun. Um, if it's never been apart before, you need the shocking action of the gun to uh, free stuff off. Again, another super, super rusty bolt. There's no way you should be putting that back on a car, so. And then same thing, that side's free. Oh, pulled the disc off out. Have I? Yeah. Nice. That's the side that's leaking, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes it is. Yeah, there is that. Let's bring in there. So that's our second trailing arm off. We're going to take the diff out. To take the diff out, you've got three bolts. There's two on the cover, two 16 mils. They never seize. Easy peasy. They're pretty well protected by the spare wheel. And then you've got one bolt in the front. I think that's also a 16 mil. So these fly out no problem at all, generally. Later, Sorry, not 16 mil bolts, 18 mil bolts. Leave that one in until we've done the front one. So these front bolts are really common for bending and or snapping, especially on track cars, drift cars, or if your front diff bush is knackered. So really common. Uh, if you've got an issue with your front bush, snap, uh, bush being worn, you'll damage the bolt. So well worth making sure the bush is good. Even if you're not going to do a full restoration on your rear end, make sure the front bush is good. You can buy a Powerflex one for about 35 quid, super cheap. And then that's the diff free, so we can now push that through. So the diff itself, pretty straightforward. Obviously, if you want to refurb this, just give this a wire wheel. There's a gasket under here you can replace. The cover is aluminium. So you can soda blast, uh, vapor blast, soda blast, whatever you want to do. Uh, put new bushes in there. Um, not much to it. This one looks like it needs a seal on this side. Um, and being that I believe it's an LSD because the car's a factory sport perspective one, it'll probably need some new clutch packs inside, but we'll look at that in a separate video. To get these shafts off, dead simple. You need an E12 female Torx bit. 
a bit of hammer action. If you look at these bolts, they're normally covered in mud. These ones don't look like they're muddy, they're just filthy with rust. Make sure it's on there properly. Don't need to take it all the way out. your drive shaft out so you can overhaul that if you want generally speaking i'll just clean it up uh, most of the cvs will probably be fine it's not really a consumable item on a 36 they don't really suffer um, from cvs or anything like that so it's more cosmetic just to make that look pretty make sure the boots are all okay um, but yeah it needs a seal on the output shaft so that's leaking and then onto the passenger side, same thing. It's definitely one of the more crusty rear ends I've ever seen. I'm sure there's an innuendo in there somewhere. <laughs> to be fair, they are probably the crustiest uh, shaft bolts ever as well. I'm really surprised they're coming undone, to be honest. I thought this was going to be another headache. If you were doing these on the car, you'd really struggle to get yeah, them off. Yeah, definitely. You haven't got the access, have you, to use a gun that close? No, and also, even if you do get them on there, the shaft, because the shaft is straight, you can't get the angle on the gun. Um, again, if you were doing this with hand tools, you just think it would slip off, the heads are too rounded. Um, I mean, it goes without saying, you wouldn't be able to do this on the floor anyway, because the, uh, you know, your hand tools, it, the diff would just slip. You need that instant shock of the gun. So if you've only got hand tools, I'd suggest going and buying a good impact gun. If you haven't got an impact gun, try and undo these on the car first, using the handbrake to hold the, uh, the shafts from spinning, at least break, break, break them free. That's probably the only way you get it undone without um, uh, a gun. There we go, so drive shaft number two out of the car. Diff, we'll have a little look at that in a minute. And then last piece of the puzzle, Let's just move that away. Last piece of the puzzle, spring perches, camber arms. So easy, easy peasy with these. So spring perches is a nut and bolt as per the outer hubs. And then the camber arm, it's got a through bolt and then a locking, it's on the front side, so I'll show you in a second, a, a locking tab, which uh, sits in the chassis. So a bit of a unique design. Again, once that's broken free, you can get your span on it. I think it's a 19 I need. Mm, down there on it, underneath the camera. On. That's it. Again, another absolutely shot to bits bolt. Weird because the, the actual middle part of it looks brand new. You wouldn't know it's 20, 30 years old. The head's not too bad, but the nut is again, fit for the bin, massively corroded. Once that's out, you can basically just wiggle this uh, spring perch out. 
And then uh, that's what we're left with. So we've still got to cut this part of the drop link off. This bush obviously is ready for replacement. You've got to check these because on the 36s these are steel. On the E46 they're aluminium. On the E46 they love to snap around here. Um, so some people will run the 36 ones on a 46. Uh, some things to note is when you refit these they are actually sided. You can tell this from the orientation of this part. So just bear in mind when you get your your bushes, if you put in polyflex, uh, powerflex or whatever, polyurethane, your bushes are sided. Notice how the bush is longer on one side and the arm is sided as well. So take note of that. And something else to consider, this one has got a little bit of corrosion in this area. It's really common for these to uh, be rusty here and actually have rotted through. Uh, that one's well on its way. Have to have a good look over that and make sure there's no holes in it before we get it powder coated. But probably caught that just in time, but a couple more years on the road, that will then rot through and your spring will fall through. So uh, yeah, before you, uh, or if you're gonna do one of these overhauls, that's something to check. You might need to find some replacement arms. So luckily they're still pretty cheap. You can pick them up second hand for about 30, 40 quid for a pair, if that. Um, but yeah, always check them for rot because it's really common. second spring perch similar story there not too bad corrosion that side but uh, lots of corrosion in there so you need to have a good poke around in there before you reuse those other than that the arm looks pretty good pretty standard practice you'll notice they all seem to have these bend marks at the top here I don't know where that appears maybe it's from the suspension if the cars on coilovers uh, it must hit the chassis at some point um, but yeah other than that should be good to reuse and then last but not least you're left with your camber bolt or camber arm sorry so these are here's your captive oh, i don't know what you call that some sort of like anchor point but it's basically like a nut with this uh, lip on it which then locks it into the chassis so these can fall in there and be a bit tricky to get out so you don't want that to happen but uh yeah essentially it's just a normal nut and bolt with a, a fancy head on it i guess The nice thing with these, you don't have to hold this side to tighten it. The chassis does that for you, or the subframe. So when you replace this, you must put one of those back in there because you can't physically tighten the nut up because access is impossible. So again, that's a BMW specialist bolt. I think you can still buy them from the dealer, but that really wants replacing because it's pretty manky. Same story as the spring perch, the arm just pulls out. These are a tight fit from memory. So that's the stock lower arm, camber arm, whatever you want to call it. There's no camera adjustment in that arm as, as such, it's in the nut and bolt I showed you earlier. These are fine to refit if you just want a daily driver, but if you want to trap car, drift car, something like that, you want a fully adjustable uh, camera arm. So you could bin that, it doesn't necessarily need to be powder coated if you're gonna fit your uh, fully adjustable arms. So that's now down to a bare subframe. Uh, this is just a vibration damper. It's like a big rubber ball. Never refit those, don't need to for a fast road, track car, anything like that. So you can just buzz that off. That goes in the bin, bit of weight reduction. It probably weighs a kilogram. Massive spacer on there. So that's now sorted. They are quite weighty. It'd be interesting to weigh that actually. See how much it actually weighs. Bear with me. Ooh. Right, just for science purposes. Let's see how much the... Uh, What's your estimate? Uh, I'm going with 1.4 kilogram. Oh, I was going to say 1.5. Oh, there I you go. I reckon, yeah. I reckon, okay. With, with the bolt. I'll go, I'll go 1.6. Okay, where's the, the washer? Where's the washer? Where's the washer? Yeah, there's a big washer that come out with it. I don't know, I haven't seen it. Oh, there you go. Oh, there it is. Okay. Right, so you've got the bolt, the washer, and the balancer. So you're saying 1.5, I'm saying 1.4. Oh, 1.2. 1.2. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Not so if you bin that, you save 1.2 kilogram, and every weight saving is a win in my book. So we're then left with that. These little covers pop off. That's where your ABS stuff lives. There's a little grommet in there. You've just got to knock that through and this pulls off. It's nothing too complicated. Um, when you're stripping your subframe and sending it off a powder coat or getting us to do it, if you're going to do it yourself, you need to have a good look. These love to corrode all around here. I can tell already this one's in good shape. It looks terrible, but it's solid. Um, but they corrode all around these areas here, all here all around here so if yours has any signs of holes or the metal's particularly thin just bin it it's not worth trying to use something that's rusty uh, but other than that that's now stripped down we'll have a quick look inside the diff just to show you that comes off so these are 16 mil bolts from memory 16 mil Moment of truth, does the Sport have an LSD still, or has someone stolen it? It definitely needs some new diff bushes. I feel like we need some suspense, some, some dramatic music. music. Yeah, some dramatic music. I'll edit in some dramatic mu music, just for effect. Can't believe, can't believe it's still got a tag on it. Yeah, I know. They normally rust off, don't they? That's either a good sign. Yeah. Oh, old people forget to put them on when they've given it a gasket change or something. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, there's not really any need to touch a diff on a car, like on a 36. I mean, it's not really... A... Besides changing the diff wheel, we just don't need to pull the cover off. That smells awful. Yeah, they all do. I think the, this is the car with the rustiest bolts I've ever had to touch. Every single bolt is swelled, swollen, swollen because of rust. So, moment of truth. Does the sport still have her LSD or not? Hopefully YouTube doesn't censor the video for me saying LSD. What are you saying? Uh, I'm, I don't know. Earlier when we locked the discs off, one wheel was still spinning, but I, I'm going to say yes. I think it's got its LSD still. I think it has, yeah. It smells so bad. It smells horrendous. I wish you could smell this. It's hey! Aha, yes! So, there is a OEM BMW limited slip diff. Uh, probably wants a rebuild. Uh, it's done 150k, stock crutches are probably knackered, but there she is in all her glory. So uh, I think it's a 293 ratio. It should be, if it's standard diff. If you ever want to know, there's two ways of telling, well, three ways. Usually there's a sticker on the top, but that's long gone. The second way is with the tag here. So if we grab a uh, wire brush, or we'll do it with a grinder. And then you can re usually read you should be able to see on there, I don't think it'll pick up on camera. But you can usually read the letters. Oh yeah, I can't see that. He's a little bit more cleaning, I think. Yeah, no, I can see it. Yeah, so it says the ratio, so 2.93, and at the end of it, there's an S, which denotes that it's an LSD, so, yeah. Obviously, we could clean it up a bit better, but we know it's an LSD, because we've seen, we've opened up. The diff has probably never been a part ever, like, before. This is probably the first time we've seen daylight, so. But that's good. That means we've got a LSD in it, which I was worried that someone might have taken it. Lots of these cars over the years have parts robbed off them for other builds and stuff like that, so. Even if it does need a re rebuild, it's nice to know we've got one. Should have tested it really before we took the other end out. Uh, Never mind. Yeah. Well, I didn't have. When the car came in, the unit didn't have a cooling system, so doing a burnout <laughs> was a bit risky. Anyway, that's a diff. So that's it for part two. 
of the subframe stripped down. Uh, part three will show you, talk you through how to strip various bushes and stuff off the car, uh, off the subframe. And uh, yeah, and then part four will be the reassembly. That'll be a bit behind, but yeah. Keep watching part three. We will show you how to strip the bushes and stuff out. And uh, there's a few tools and stuff that definitely you need to make life easier, but you can do it with a hammer and chisel and a hacksaw blade if you need to but tools will make your life easier. So yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.